Ladies and gentlemen, it is a big, weird, wild world out there, folks. And here we stand, our Pied del Cañon, ready for anything. I'm Rob, that's a Natch, and you're listening to... The Bravo Show! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome, welcome. It is Monday morning, 8.30 a.m. Central European time, 2.30 in the morning for our American friends in um, uh, in New York in that time zone. Uh, I think that's Eastern Standard Time. 2.30 p.m. for my friend Eric in the chat in the Philippines. How are you doing, guys? What a show we have lined up for you today. Um, in today's 100 Humans, I ask people what they wouldn't miss about daily life if they were stranded on a desert island. Um, We find out uh, why searches for VPNs were were at an all-time high in Virginia, in the United States. And we also find out what was raining down on the French countryside. But all that fun, my friends, is in the second half of the show. In the first half, we have an amazing, unpopular opinion today, Um, which I think is kind of common sense. Meh, I don't know. I'll be interested to hear your opinion, um, Natch, as a father on this one. Mm, let's see. Um, but before that, guys, I'm here. You're here. Let's see what's going on in the world. Um, let me scroll up on the chat. How are you doing, guys? I see a bunch of you are there. Um, good afternoon, Rob, and everyone worldwide, says Eric. How are you doing, Eric? Born to Iron Man, good morning and afternoon to Eric. <laughs> Good morning, Bond to Iron Man. Eugene is here. Hi, guys. Vero is here. Good morning, beautiful warriors. Um, I want the whole world... This is from Eric, okay? I want the whole world to hear this from me, asking this news question. Um, is a, the 600 tweet rule... Um, has it gone too far, or is it an impo- or is it an improvement to prevent unauthorized valuable data? Hmm. Twitter users like me are now having a major issue about this. Did you know about this, Natch? Nope. Um, okay, so here we go. So Elon sent out um, a tweet saying that you will, you're you only able to see a limited number of tweets. I can't remember the exact number, whether it was 300, 400, I suppose at different tiers of Twitter blue and, and whatnot, you can get to see more. But yeah... You can only see a certain number of tweets. Eric, I would encourage you to do a little digging on that news story. Because if you do, you will find out. (laughs) This is completely true, Natch. It was going to be in the news today, but I I took it out. Um, You'll find out that these limitations are happening because Twitter did not pay its Google Cloud bill. (laughs) And because Twitter didn't pay its Google Cloud bill... Um, uh, everyone is um, experiencing shortages. Yeah. Twitter is a hellscape. Stop using it. <laughs> As I did some months ago. Um, how are we doing? Pedro's here. Good morning, guys. I will probably not be able to participate. Oh, had a terrible Friday and weekend. Oh, my God. Hopefully nothing too bad, Pedro. Um, chin up. Animo, as they say here in Spain. Um... Before it was 6,000, now it's 600. Yeah, we need to ask Elon Musk to pay his bills. That's basically why that happened, Eric. Do a little digging and you will find the story. Um, uh, Cheer up, Pedro. Get well soon. Yeah, get well soon, Pedro. How was your weekend, Natch? Any special plans? Well, I had lunch with my family. Nice. 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 I did Canada Day. I ate pancakes. I did not eat poutine, Natch. I left before poutine o'clock. I went there with my goddaughters and Andrea. Um, it was nice, though. I ate pancakes. The pancakes were good after the big pancake debate here on uh, <laughs> on the lunchtime show. No, I enjoyed them. A great deal with um, maple syrup, etc. Met the Canadian ambassador again for the second time. She seems like a lovely lady. Elon Musk imposes daily limits on reading posts on Twitter. Yeah, Eric, you need to do a little more digging. Search Twitter, Google, Bills, or something like that. Um, let's see. Okay, so let's um, let's turn our attention to a little bit of news. Here we go. Um, this is an interesting story. Australia legalizes psychedelics for mental health. Did you hear? Have you heard about this match at all? Um, there have been modern tests um, f- for treating things like PTSD 
with psychedelics. And the, the results have been really positive. Australia has now become the first country in the world to legalize the use of um, psychedelics like MDMA or psilocybin. Psilocybin is the active chemical in, in magic mushrooms. Uh, I think you call them here setas hallucinogenes. That's the one. <laughs> Alucin- well, I'm going to pronounce it right. Here we go, Natch. Alucinogenes. Did I get that right? First time. Setas alucinogenes. Oh, my God. Jeez, Louise. That's like a, that's a trabalenguas. That's a tongue twister. Right, Natch? Trabalenguas. Nivelazo. <laughs> See, just when you thought I was completely incompetent. Uh, here I come. So psilocybin, the, the active um, ingredient in magic mushrooms, to treat certain um, mental health conditions. Uh, approved psychiatrists can prescribe these substances for patients suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder, there it is, and certain types of, res- of resistant depression. Uh, The move, which took effect on July 1st, 2023, has been deemed a game changer by some, while others express caution, noting um, the potential for bad trips. Have you ever taken a hallucinogen, Natch? Um, No. (laughs) Have you ever taken a hallucinogen? I have tried them once, but a, a little bit. Just a little bit. I mean, it was quite shocking. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, in my when I was um, when I was working, when, basically when I was working in the theatre, there was a period of time there <laughs> where we took a lot of magic mushrooms, like a lot. Um, and I can see, I'm going to be honest with you, I can see how this would have um, psychiatric benefits for people with disorders. I honestly can. It's a bit of um, a hot take. It's a bit of a hot take. Um, good morning, Mr. Cruzando. Um, again, Derek, you're pushing, you're, you're, you keep on posting this news story in the chat, and I'm asking you, please go and read the news about why this actually happened. Okay. Um, Vero, bravo, Rob. Thank you, thank you, Vero. So, yeah, um, yeah, um, what were we talking about? Ah, yeah, psilocybin. So, yeah, I have taken magic mushrooms in the past, and I can I can understand a great deal why this might work. I remember that time in my life, like I would I would probably state that there is a definite before and after in my personality, in my character, and before and after the times I tried these substances. It's like taking your life and zooming out. <laughs> I think before the 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 change before and after is I stopped taking myself so seriously. Um, after taking um, after taking those substances, all right. Um, let's continue. Do you remember, guys? Um, I don't know if Natch Natch, have you got your headphones on? Yes. Do you remember when I mentioned um, that um, there was a, a a team at the University University of Massachusetts that discovered a way to make re- energy out of out of the air? Okay. Well, there is a follow up on that story. It was an accident, apparently. A complete accident. Um, Here we go. This piece of news from The Guardian. A team at the University of Massachusetts, led by Professor um, Jun Yao, has generated small but continuous electric current from humidity in the air. A development that revives Nikola Tesla's century-old dream of harnessing air-derived electricity or hydroelectricity. Um, this is that was a piece of news we originally reported, but since then, um, further interviews have been um, have been had, and apparently, yeah, the discovery was completely accidental. The, what they were trying to do was create a humidity sensor, <laughs> which is which, which this if this works and this if this proves to be a renewable um, source of energy, this will go down in history as a, another one of the most life-changing things caused completely by accident. Like penicillin was um, an accident caused by leaving bread out, I think. And, um, yeah, and potentially kind of world-changing um, uh, technology here developed by trying to make a humidity sensor. Now, let's continue. Let's continue. Finally, finally, here we go. And this is a great piece of news. I wanted to actually cover this last week, but I didn't have the time. Um, The U.S. is going to invest $42 billion 
in universal internet access. Hmm. $42 billion in universal internet access. Imagine a world where you don't have to pay for the internet. Hmm. The US government has announced plans to invest $42 billion by 2030 to make internet access across the country or to, to make internet access universal across the country. This initiative, part of President Joe Biden's economic policies for his 2024 re-election campaigns, um, aims to address the lack of high-speed internet access for 24 million Americans due to unaffordability or the lack of connectivity due, um, in their communities. And that's an issue here in Spain, something I had no idea of. I didn't think... Um, I didn't think high-speed internet was so difficult in my ignorance, in my ignorance. But when I was looking for um, places to live in the north of Spain, you quickly discover how remote places still have no connectivity issues. Now, imagine, and this is Europe. Now, imagine in America, where they have these this massive country, vast tracts of land in between communities. Um, I think this is awesome. Would you consider now, Natch, the internet being a human right? Or do you think it's something that people should have to pay for? Mm, I don't know. No. Right? No. Not yet. No. No, you don't think uh, so? There are things more... <laughs> more present. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, okay. Okay, I get your point. Like, before we make internet, like, accessible for everyone, maybe we should do the same thing with water. <laughs> um, um, a certain amount of food to keep you alive every day, maybe. But no, I like this move because we're starting to see knowledge or the idea of the proliferation of knowledge being an inalienable human right, right? The the idea to invest, the government invests $42 billion so that everybody has connectivity to the internet, I think is a real move forward, honestly. I think it's a real... What do you guys think in the chat? Um, uh, I agree with what you said. The Philippines had the same problem in one specific company. Ooh. Um, let's see. Um, there is there is more news, but I don't want to waste any more time, guys. I want to go sp- uh, straight to today's unpopular opinion. Unpopular opinion. All right, guys. What is an unpopular opinion? It's a brain fat, una rayada, un pedo mental, un pedo cerebral. I share it with you on my social media. You can find that social media account at on Instagram at professional bohemian that's bohemio professional but in english okay professional bohemian i share the i share it on my stories you guys vote and then the real decision makers are the people watching live in the chat here we go the unpopular opinion was we don't need zoos i think you just say thought in spanish right Un thought zoo yeah yeah um, we don't need zoos. It's time to close them all. Woo! Hot take. How do you think people voted, Natch? Uh, true. Do you think true? Uh, by a little, by a lot. By a lot. By a lot. Correct on both counts, sir. So. 80%, 80% said true. And it was a very, very popular vote. Eh? It's, I think, one of the most popular that I've ever done. Um, yeah, 80% said true. I'd be interested in your thoughts in the chat. I had a mixture of reactions. Um, from complete agreement to people um, emphasizing the the conservation work that some zoos do. But strangely enough, I didn't get many people saying, no, this is ridiculous, like arguing strongly in favor of um, zoos, only kind of defending their conservationist work. So, hmm, let's see. Um, Eric said, for me, I said the same answer, true. Uh, I reckon the internet is important nowadays, but there are other priorities, says Vero. Yeah, I agree. I agree. But in these remote communities, if they had easy access to fast internet, it would open up a new, um, it would open up a whole world of job opportunities and economic opportunities that are currently close to them. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, and I get you. There are other priorities, and and that is undeniable. Okay, let's um, let's continue here. So, um, we don't need zoos, and we should close them all. That's today's unpopular opinion. Um, in around ten minutes, I will post a poll in the chat. But before then, let's see what the elves said about this issue. Okay, so in the pro column, agreeing, 
that we should close all zoos. We don't need them anymore. Um, here we go. Um, animal welfare. Welfare. Confining animals in zoos can lead to physical and mental health problems, such as obesity, depression, and stress-related illnesses. In the wild, these animals would have much more space and stimulation. Wow. Do you know what I just felt reading that? I've just felt basically what's what happened since COVID. <laughs> since all the worldwide lockdowns. Animals suffering from obesity, depression, and stress-related illnesses. Did you enjoy being locked down in COVID? <laughs> yeah, interesting. Um, okay, uh, we'll continue. Uh, zoos may send the wrong message to people, especially children, about our relationship with animals. They can promote the idea that it's acceptable to cage animals for our entertainment. And finally, in the um, pro column, agreeing with the statement, um, in the pro column, uh, funds and resources used for zoos could be redirected towards preserving natural habitats and supporting conservation efforts in the wild, which might have more significant sustainable impacts. Some pretty strong arguments there. Some pretty strong arguments. Good morning, Min. How are you doing? How are you doing? Um, take Manila Zoo in the Philippines, for example. It was forced to shut down due to poor sanitation purposes, including, including sewage problems. Wow. That doesn't surprise me. There are some terrible practices in a lot of zoos and people like one common argument common argument i heard was not all zoos are bad hmm but isn't okay i get you some zoos may be uh, more sanitary may take better care of the animals in terms of grooming and what whatnot they may have more space to roam around for example but would they have as are they do they have as much space as they have in the wild <laughs> you know what i mean how did you feel when you were locked down would you have felt better being locked down in a bigger apartment? Sure. Sure. But would you have felt as good as being let outside? No, right? Hmm. Should we even care about that? Should we even care about the psycho psychological impact of an animal? That's another fair point to make. I would say yes. Hmm. Okay, let's continue. Um, disagreeing with the sen sentiment, saying that no, we should not close all zoos. Um, many zoos play a crucial role in conserving endangered species with successful breeding programs that have helped restore population numbers. Fair point. That's a fair point. Um, zoos provide an educational experience, allowing people, especially children, to see and learn about wild animals they wouldn't encounter otherwise. This can foster a love and respect for wildlife and nature. Really, is the only way to learn about an animal going to see it caged up? I mean, uh, whatever. I don't want to add too many editorial comments here until we get to the arguing section. <laughs> um, zoos offer valuable opportunities for scientists to study animal behavior, genetics, and diseases, contributing to overall our overall understanding of the natural world and potentially informing conservation strategies. Hmm. Interesting, interesting. We got, um, I got quite a bunch of, so as I said before, I got a bunch of um, comments about this unpopular opinion. Um, zoos are outdated and cruel, says Nina. Zoos are outdated and cruel. Animals should live in the wild, not in enclosures for our entertainment. Sanctuaries and wildlife reserves are better alternatives. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and um, and give you another unpopular opinion. I think san sanctuaries and reserves. I mean, well, okay. Meh. Sanctuaries, reserves. Oof. Okay, okay. I'm not going to give you an unpopular opinion then. Because I think it might be too unpopular. But I think animals belong in the wild, man. They don't belong, you know, in the inner city or in cities, in enclosures. I don't know. Education for me doesn't seem like a good enough argument to keep on keep this practice going. In fact, I will go even further. I will say in the future, people will look back at the idea of a zoo as we nowadays look back at the idea of the gladi gladiatorial fights in the Colosseum in Rome. I think we'll just see it as barbaric and, and stupid. Hmm. Okay, let's continue. I, I, had, um, I had other... Um, 
I had other feedback. Leah said, it's complex, honestly. While I agree that some zoos can provide poor living conditions, they also contribute to conservation efforts and educate the public about the importance of biodiversity. We need reform, not complete closure. I would argue, Leah, here that, you know, the same conservation efforts can happen, but in the wild, you know. Uh, Mike says, I see where you're coming from, but as a parent, zoos are one of the few places where my kids can see and learn about animals close up. Maybe we should focus on improving them instead. Mike, you know, if you love zoos, let me blow your mind a second. The internet. (laughs) Your kids can see animals, see like videos of animals until they're blue in the face. (laughs) Until they get bored, you know. Does a kid really need to be a few inches away from a gorilla to know what a gorilla is? It's my argument, you know. Um, how are we doing? Um, Coralism, good morning. Animals belong in the wild, in my opinion. In the future, animal rights will become more and more respected, but they'll end up disappearing. I hope so. Zoos will disappear, I mean. I, I got you, I got you. Um, Derek says, or Eric says, that's why the government takes action seriously if something is messed up. Else it will be forced to shut down with a violation notice. Hmm. From the Philippine Animal Welf- Welfare Society. Got you, got you. Okay, let's um, uh, let's continue. I've got one more. Closing all zoos seems a bit extreme. This is coming from Raj in the UK. Uh, they generate revenue, provide jobs. However, I do believe there should be stricter regulations to ensure animals' welfare. What do you think, Natch? What's your take on this? It's difficult. I don't like zoos, but my kids love animals, for example, and I brought my kids to, to the zoo. Um, I, I wouldn't... I, I would agree if they disappear. But that's, yeah, I, I, I get you. It's a complex issue because I've been to Faunia a bunch of times. Faunia in Madrid is is a zoo... Let's not make any mistake about it. They call it a reserve, a preserve, etc. It's not. It's a zoo, right? Because the animals are behind glass. <laughs> not all of them. There are prairie dogs running around and monkeys swinging around. But it's a zoo. <laughs> you know, it's a zoo. And, you know, the animals are well taken care of, treated with a lot of respect. But it's a zoo. Would those animals not be happier in their natural habitat? I, I think they would. I think there's a great argument to be made that they would. The The conservation argument doesn't hold water for me. It doesn't hold any water. It's leaky. <laughs> the conservation argument is that we need zoos to help protect animals um, for their transition to the wild. Dude, if zoos didn't exist, then the conservation efforts, nine times out of ten, wouldn't be necessary. You know, except for in cases like pandas where they were, you know, hunted to extinction. Yeah, I don't know, man. I don't know. Um, I'd be interested in your guys' opinions, though. That's for sure. The main point of this unpopular opinion is stricter regulations. I don't agree, Um, Eric. I think the main point of this argument is not stricter regulations. It's a slow transition away from, um, uh, from using animals for our entertainment purposes. The main point of a zoo, here's the thing. The main point of a zoo is not conservation. A zoo is not making its money to keep its doors open by protecting animal species. Get Let that sink in. That is not a zoo's primary function. A zoo's primary function is so you can point and stare at animals with your children and say, Oh, look, it's a gorilla. <laughs> sure. You know, they have to do some good stuff. Like BP cleaning up an oil spill. They do a little bit of conservation work. Good for you. (laughs) But that's not a zoo's main purpose. A zoo's main purpose is so you can can go and be in the presence of an animal, a dangerous animal, and feel that thrill of those guys behind a bar, or behind bars, all that that power, unable to reach you. Does that make sense to you, Natch, or is that too extreme? Mm, no, I think the purpose is more for the kids to see them than 
Well, yeah, a little bit for kids, but adults go to zoos as well. Like, they, they don't kind of... the Tigers and lions, you know, how much joy is a kid getting out of that? You know, you have to hold them over the enclosure, let them look down. Do you remember Harambe, the, the gorilla that got shot when the when a, a toddler ended up falling into the enclosure? I don't know, man. I don't know. Zoos. I'm not an animal rights activist by any means, but I do think... At some point in the future, we're going to look back at this practice and think, wow, we were the animals. We were the animals. I don't know, man. What do you think? I mean, what I think uh, means means little in comparison to you guys. I will post a poll in the chat and you will tell me, should zoos close? Do we really need them anymore? I don't think so. Hmm. All right, guys, um, I will post a poll in the chat. Thank you so much for showing up this morning. Guys, so many things you could have been doing instead of doing those things. You decided to take the time to spend some time with me, and it means the world. See you soon. Hey, guys, if you'd like to support the show, you can do so on Patreon. That's patreon.com forward slash professional bohemian. There you'll find VODs of the episodes as they are recorded live, blogs, vlogs, and behind-the-scenes content. If you'd like to watch the show live, you can do so on twitch.tv forward slash professional bohemian. And you can participate in the polls we use in the show on Instagram at professional bohemian or Twitter at pro bo, P R O B O H. Okay, on with the show. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the show. If you're just tuning in, um, what did you miss? Oh my God. Oh my God. We, um, we found out that Australia has legalized psychedelics when i say psychedelics i mean specifically mdma and um psilocybin uh, psilocybin being the agent in um, magic mushrooms uh for for tr- to treat certain mental health conditions like um, depression and uh, ptsd and having tried these substances <laughs> um let me tell you i can understand i can understand completely how that might work hmm um, and then let's continue. Uh, it was an accident. Yeah, what, what was an accident? Well, the scientists who have discovered a way to turn um, humid air into renewable energy. And they did so by complete accident. Apparently, they were trying to create a humidity sensor. And just like many other discoveries in history, have created something that could potentially be absolutely groundbreaking. Hmm. Let's see. And then um, uh, later we um, we went on to talk about the U.S. Potentially about to invest $42 billion in universal internet access. I'd say in the U.S. they should probably first work on universal health care, right? <laughs> universal health care, then maybe work on, you know, doing something about the gun issue. <laughs> and then, then maybe... Think about the internet. I don't know. Who do, what do I know, guys? I don't live in the States. I live in Spain. Okay, let's... Um, uh, then we moved on to our own popular opinion, uh, which is sadly very, very popular, or was very, very popular. I thought I'd hear more um, people arguing against the point. The point being, we don't need zoos, and it's probably time we close them all down. We don't need zoos. I mean, we're on the border of, you know... I mean, what do you? What, how close do you need to be to a wild animal? What are you actually learning from that? Is it just entertaining? Like you, you, the, Natch, you said before, right? It's for more for the kids. What do the kids get out of that experience that they couldn't get out of having a dog, you know, or that they couldn't get out of, you know, going to see wild rabbits jumping around? Well, they're like huge animals, and well. Most of the the most impressive at least for my kids are the the ones that, that are huge. Yeah, yeah, you know, the elephants. Really mind yeah. to see a, a wolf, for example, and although it's very <laughs> a very nice, a uh, well, very good animal, but mm, I don't know. They like to see giraffes and elephants and rhinos. I hear that. And, I get it. I get it. And the the prohibitive cost of taking your kids on a safari to see them on the in the wild. I get it. I get it. It's it's uh, it's an experience for kids. I'm not going to say it's educational because I honestly do not believe it is educational. Taking a kid to a zoo, you're just taking it to see something that is alive and unusual. 
<laughs> right? I mean, I get it. I get it. It's an experience that um, otherwise would be um, something limited only to the super rich who can go on safaris and whatnot. I've never been on a safari. I love animals. I have, though, been to many zoos and safari parks, um, which I, I understand you probably think is quite hypocritical, given that I'm arguing against them right now. Um, but I understand. I kind of get it. I understand why they remain open and why people go and why people persist in going and, and can continue to go to see these animals um, that are trapped in enclosures. You know, to put it one way, if you don't like that turn of phrase, well, get used to it because that's exactly what the that's exactly the reality of the situation. Hmm. Uh, let's see what people were were saying in the chat very quick. Um, I know we got some messages from Vero. Maybe it should be some of us who should be behind bars. I don't know. Oof. Hot hot take there, Vero. A hot take. Yeah, I would argue there there are already way too many of hu uh, humans behind bars. <laughs> Maybe that's an unpopular opinion for another day. Uh, Mr. Cruthander, last time I went to a zoo, it was really sad to see how some animals live there. Zoos should be banned. Mm, interesting. Yeah, me, I, I agree. As someone who, uh, in his youth, loved zoos, there was... I remember I have some distinct memories of going to um, a safari park... If you don't know what a safari park is, you drive in with your car and you drive around and through your car window, you see wild animals. Okay. The monkeys break your car into pieces and things like that. Do you have such a thing in Spain, Natch? Does the safari parks exist here? There, I think so. There is one in Cantabria. Okay. In Cabarceno. There is more or less. You go with the car and you see them. Yeah. Yeah. And your kids get to see close up how monkeys have sex. <laughs> yeah. That's that. That's basically what those are about. <laughs> yeah, on the bonnet of your car. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I was fascinated by these things as a, as a kid um, and as an adult. But as I've grown older and, you know, I've kind of developed my own kind of morals or my own ethical guide, if you want. Yeah, I, I, I stay away from them. And sadly, there is a great zoo in Madrid, um, Faunia. Where there are no real big animals, it's all smaller animals and they're kind of free to roam around. Yeah, I don't know. I, I'm, uh, I understand why a parent might take a kid to, um, uh, to a safari park, uh, to a zoo as well. I mean, I get it. The thrill there of seeing an animal that they will never probably see in the wild. I just don't think it's fair. I don't think it's fair. Um, Eric says, I voted true for this 100%. Keeping animals in the zoo is like keeping them in a circus. For me, zoos never exist. It's like, yeah, it is. At least we will remember zoos, I think, in the future. A lot like we remember circus animals now. You know? Especially now we're a lot more cognizant as a society about mental health. And animals get depressed, man. If you've ever owned a dog, you know that animals get depressed. <laughs> that sounds this. I, I, I kind of hear myself saying that out loud and I'm making myself angry. <laughs> but it's true. Animals do get depressed. Um, let's see. <clears throat> I agree with you, Mr. Cruzando, says Eric, because looking at those animals malnourished is like cruelty to me. Now, that's true. Now, those, those particular zoos should be closed down immediately. And that's what reserves and preserves are about, right? It's taking zoo animals and rehabilitating them. Because quite often they can't go back into the wild. That's the kind of damage we do to these animals. We, we screw them up so badly they can't return to the wild and live out the rest of their days behind um, in a cage. We institutionalize animals, you know? I don't know. And I, I imagine there is a bunch of you out there thinking, no, 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 you're wrong. Rob, you're wrong. Zoos play an important part of education, research, conservation efforts. Um, and you you know what? You might be right. I often um, express very strong opinions here. Um, and I'll tell you something. I'm, I'm the chief idiot among us. I will be the first to hold my hands up and say I'm wrong if I really believe it to be true. But I don't think I am on this, on this occasion. Because a zoo's primary fo focus is not... A, a, is not about is not preserving a, the a species a, a, a zoo's primary f focus is not um animal welfare a, a zoo 
is a business that needs to make money to keep its doors open like every other business. And the most profitable way to do that is to sell tickets so people can stare at animals. You know, that's what zoos are about. Sure, they have some little altruistic efforts. I made the um, I made the argument in the first half, like BP um, doing environmental causes, <laughs> British pre- Petroleum. You know, the guys who cause all the oil spills, Shell. <laughs> sure, they have um, a section of their company dedicated to altruistic environmental kind of causes, but that's not their main function. Just like a zoo's main function isn't conservation. A zoo's main function is to make money. Anyway, so let's see. Okay, so that's my opinion. That's my opinion. But how did you guys vote? So I made the statement, zoos, they serve no real purpose. They should be closed down. What did you guys say? A little drum roll match. True, 100% of you. Well done. Well done. Good job. Mr. Cruzando here says, um, if the zoo does not make any money, what do you think is going to happen? Um, Well, I mean, this isn't the first time. This wouldn't be the first time that a zoo closes because people have stopped going. I think zoo attendance has been falling for the last 50 to 100 years. You know what I mean? I mean, we don't, the, our only opportunity to see a giraffe is not in a zoo anymore, if you get my meaning. We can just open up our mobile phones, go to YouTube and see a giraffe walking around, <laughs> you know. Um, but what would probably happen is those animals would be transported to other zoos that remain open, that are more popular. Or they would go to wildlife preserves, you know. But most of these animals in zoos are so traumatized, they can't go back into the wild. That's sad. That's sad for me to know that. Hmm. And that's coming from me. And I look, I'll hold my hands up and say, look, I'm how much of an animal rights activist am I when I eat meat? You know, when I wear leather? <laughs> how much of an animal rights activist can I be? Well, I can be up to the point in which... Um, in which my morals kind of say that I need to stop doing a certain behavior. And that behavior for me is going to a zoo, going to a circus with animals, that kind of thing. Um, And it seems like you guys agree. I would love to play devil's advocate here, as I usually do, and kind of offer an opinion from the other side of the fence. It's just very, very hard for me in this instance to justify the existence of zoos, which is why I turned to Natch before to ask him, because as a parent, I think it's different, right? I think parents go out of their way to see that shock and awe and wonder in a child's face, particularly their own. Um, And sure, seeing an elephant will do that. But, you know, so will riding on a roller coaster. (laughs) And kids, you know, they haven't experienced that much. Anything will provoke that experience in kids. Show them something they haven't seen before. I don't know. I don't know. It's hard to justify the practice. So you know what? I won't. Let's go (laughs) to 100 humans. All right, my friends. It was a long walk to work today across snow-capped mountains and through river valleys. And on that walk, I encountered 100 humans. And I asked them all a question. Today's question was, name something you wouldn't miss about daily life if you were stranded on a desert island. Oof. We maybe need to unpack that. So name something you would not miss about daily life if you were stranded on a desert island. Nombre algo que no echaría de menos de la vida cotidiana si se quedara varado en una isla desierta. It wasn't me. That was... Nivelato. Well, thank you anyway. It was That was Deepo. That was Deepo. <laughs> the pop pronunciation, that was me. <laughs> so I asked them that question. They gave me their answers. I have the seven most popular answers right here. Name something you wouldn't miss about your daily life. Vida cotidiana. Um, uh, if you were stranded on a desert island, so you were isolated from the world, what would you not miss? Um, all right, let's go to uh, Natch as we uh, as we always do with our for our first answer. What do you think, Natch? What's something? Having to go to work. 
having to go to work. You wouldn't miss this, Natch? I am shocked. Shocked to my core. <laughs> um, uh, let's see. I thought all this time, work. <laughs> yes. That Eric says work as well, so you're not alone. Hmm. Is it there, though? Work. Of course it says. Well done, Natch. Well done, Eric. Not only is it there, friends, it's the number one answer. Eric is um, he's starting to become a little bit of a, of a genius at the um, 100 Humans, man. He was number one twice last week. So work is there. Well done, well done. Uh, let's see. Housework. Chores. Chores. Housework. Um, that was from hmm, Coralism. Housework. Is housework there? Yes, it is. Coralism. Well done. In fact, um, it's, the, it's the seventh most popular answer. Well done. Well done. I thought I might have to give clues for that one. I didn't think you'd get it. So I'm happy. <laughs> okay, let's see what um, other people are saying. Um, tareas domesticas, would you say, for housework? Tareas domesticas. Okay. Let's continue. Um, checking the time, says Mr. Cruzando. Checking the time or being a slave to your watch. Checking your watch. Mm. Is that there? I've got to admit, now he said it, I'm thinking, yeah, that to- totally. <laughs> but did the 100 humans say that? They did not, Mr. Cruzando. Yeah, a good answer, though. A good answer. Vero says crowded places. Crowded places. You know what? Let's give it to Vero. Yes. The 100 humans said people. (laughs) Yeah, I just would not miss people. Yeah, and crowded places is certainly part of that. Jeez, the metro on a morning. Oh, God, it's disgusting. There's a line that comes to this area that is closed. So everyone is going on line 10, which is where I travel. I'm just sick of smelling people's armpits. It's the worst time. Don't close the metro in the summer when it's so hot out. People butting their armpits up against your nose. You've got to remain polite. Come on. (laughs) Um, Okay, let's continue. Waking up early. Waking up early. Let's see. Waking up early. Is it there? No, it's not. But a great answer, Coralism, nonetheless. Waking up early. Um, uh, let's see, say, Bills. Bills, says um, Eric. Bills. Wouldn't miss Bills if he was trapped on a desert island. Bills. Bills. How would you say Bills in, in Spanish? Uh, facturas. Facturas, claro. Damn it. Bills. Is it there? Yes, it is. Well done. Fourth most popular answer. Yeah, me too. I would miss, I would not miss bills at all. Um, mobile phones says Coralism. Mobile phones. Hmm. Wouldn't miss my mobile phone. It's there. Well done. Okay, guys, you've only got two more to get. Ors is here. He says the in-laws. <laughs> Los suegras. The in-laws. <laughs> Is it there? Is it there? No, it's not. <laughs> That's a great answer, though. He doesn't mean any in-law. He just means his bit. his in-laws. <laughs> no one would miss them. <laughs> okay, let's see, let's see. Two in a row, Eric. Well done, well done. Okay, I'll give you some clues. Um... Some people get to work in this way. I'm not talking about the metro. That would have been me giving you a clue. You know, and everybody travels to work at the same time, Natch. That's the problem with this kind of thing. Everyone travels to work at the same time. Hmm. Causing, um, you know, causing people maybe even to arrive late. Oh, what a world, this modern society where everyone's traveling around at the same time. Mm, I think Eric knows the answer. What do you What do you think it is, Natch? Traffic jams. Traffic jams. Well done. Well done. Traffic jams. Nice. And finally, one more. Last one. 
Usually, people get home from work. You know, in, in ancient times, Natch, people would gather around and stare at a fire to relax. We still do the same thing, but it's not a fire. <laughs> you know? What do you think it might be, Natch? TV? It's the TV well done! <laughs> All right, guys. Well done. Well done. You're killing it. All right. Let's go um, down the list. I asked 100 humans to name something they wouldn't miss about their daily life. Que no echarían de menos about their daily life. Vida cotidiana. If they were stranded on a desert island. In position number seven was housework. Housework. God, I can't remember how to say that. Tareas domesticas. Yeah. Housework. Um, in position number six, people. La gente. I wouldn't miss people. Or as um, uh, I think it was Vero said, crowds, crowded pla- uh, crowded places. In position number five, was a mobile phone or a telephone. Wouldn't miss it, those, that daily constant distraction, the buzzing, the bleeping. Ugh. <laughs> in position number four. Las facturas, the bills. No one would miss the bills. In position number three was traffic. Oh, God, I know how to say this, Natch. I know how to say it, but I just can't remember. Don't tell me. Don't tell me. Trafico? But there's another way to say it. There's, um... Oh, God, go on, tell me. Atasco? Atasco, God damn it. Uh, give yourself a nivelazo. Nivelazo. Será posible? Vaya nivelazo. Tascos in El Coche. God damn it. In position number two was TV. Television. Wouldn't miss it for the world. And finally, in position number one. Well done to Natch and Eric. It was work. It was work. I would miss my radio shows. I would miss the radio shows. I just would not miss um I would not miss anything else. <laughs> Other than you, Natch, obviously. You know, I preface it with other than you. Oh, all right, all right. There we go, guys. Let's go to complete the news. Complete the news. All right, friends. This is complete the news. I'm going to give you a news headline on titular, but I'm going to leave out some important information. Your job is to complete the news. Okay, I'll give you three options: A, B, or C. Using those three options. You'll complete the news. Guys, if you're one of the many people that are watching but not participating, this is your moment, okay, in the chat. All you have to write is A, B, or C. A, B, or C. Here we go. Blank rains down on the countryside after a French fighter jet intercepts a plane. We should unpack that a little bit for our friends, right? Blank rains down. Calle del Cielo, basically. basically, Like rain, obviously, rains down. Um, On the the countryside, after a fighter jet, I don't know, wow, I've no idea how you say that. Like, you know, like Tom Cruise flies. (laughs) Un caza. Un caza. Un caza, you say. Why? I had no idea. That's the way you say a fighter jet, a hunt, a hunter. Oh, wow, dude, I love it. Un caza. So a fighter jet from France intercepts a plane. So he sees a, sees a plane and it um, shoots at it. It intercepts it. So blank rains down on the French countryside after a French fighter jet intercepts a plane. Is it A, urine, pee-pee? Is it B, drugs? Or is it C, pornography? Mm. A, B, or C? Blank rains down on the French con- um, on the French countryside after a plane is intercepted by a caza, by a um, uh, fighter jet. I think you you could also say Yuevin sobre, no, for rain down, right? or could you not? Could Would- yeah, okay. So blank rains down on the countryside after a fighter jet intercepts a plane. Is it A, B, or C? A, urine, wee wee. B, drugs. Or C, um, pornography. All three of them, says Vero. (laughs) Okay, we've got some answers in the chat. What do you think, Natch? A. 
You think A, Wee Wee. Yes. Oh, he's Natch playing. He's Natch playing 3D chess here. Is it the vocabulary that made him think A rains down? Is Natch just proving why he's the Oracle? Hmm, let's find out. It's currently a tie in the chat. We need one tiebreaker to come in. Well, we could count the Natch, I guess, which would tip A over the edge. It would make A the answer. You're in. Let's see. Let's get a little drum roll, Natch. Drugs, B! <laughs> of course it's drugs, come on. Drugs rain down on the fr- countryside after a French fighter jet intercepts a plane. A French fighter jet intercepted a, a tourist plane in the remote Adranche region of France, leading to the pilot to throw out over a dozen bags of suspected drugs. <laughs> the suspect, a Polish national with a history of drug offences, was arrested upon landing. Jeez, man. <laughs> you know, like Johnny Depp was down there <laughs> with his umbrella turned upside down. Please, please rain on me. <laughs> there you go. Well done. Oh, and B actually became the number one answer. Well done to Eric and Mr. Cruthander for getting that. Oh, my God, guys. What um, an interesting show. Look, I will post all the links that I've used in today's show in um, my Patreon. So if you want to dive deeper into these subjects um you can i will also post the elon musk twitter nonsense where he didn't pay his google bill (laughs) for twitter just um to keep you up on up to date on that as well guys um a lot of fun today we've spoken about everything from zoos and i'm sorry if i've triggered you a little bit with my opinions on zoos look you can think what you want there are no real wrong answers in life, only shades of greys. Uh, we spoke about um, psychedelics, use for mental health in Australia, everything. Look, guys, tons of things you could have been doing today. Just a ton of things. But instead of doing those things, you took the time to spend some time with me, and it means the absolute world. I will see you guys tomorrow. <laughs>